you're not a hang glider pilot or a paraglider pilot, the chances are that you've never heard of Ager, which is a little village in the Catalan region of the Pyrenees in Spain. Uh, but I'm guessing a lot of the hang glider and paraglider pilots who may be watching this will instantly recognise the vista behind me, which is the iconic uh, hill of Ager, and that is the village. Um, Ager has long been a mecca for hang gliding and paragliding for free flying. It gets consistently good weather and has got a fantastic area where we can fly around. So this is a little guide to come into Azure. The village itself, as uh, the last census, has got a population of just 274 people. Although that does swell in the summer when you get the hang gliders and the paragliders coming here to fly. Azure is one of the more accessible European flying sites for UK pilots. Um, it's about... Uh, probably a 20 hour drive all in total from the north of England where I am anyway um, if you go across on the ferry, ferry is usually about £150 something like that and then you can drive down through France and into Spain an alternative um, way to get here is flying if you get somebody else to drive a car or somebody's taking your glider for you uh, and it's a two hour drive from Barcelona airport to here been situated on the very edge of the Pyrenees uh, Asia is in a really good weather zone, you get very consistent weather here. For instance, we've just held the British National Hang Gliding Championships and we've flown six out of seven days. We've actually had a competition task on six out of the seven days that we've uh, had for the competition. And we flew for a few days before that as well. Access to the hill is uh, via a tarmac road all the way up. It's a nice easy drive all the way up, no rough bumps or anything like that. And there is absolutely tons of parking on the top of the hill uh, the other thing is there is no cost to it it doesn't you're not charged to fly here uh, this takeoff area is owned and maintained by the local council so you can just turn up and fly uh, not a problem at all they've even got some portaloos uh, which I believe they have there all the time so really good facilities on the top of the hill so this is the main takeoff at Azure here uh, takeoff is just there and as you can see, there is absolutely tons of rigging room behind me. So you have no, no problems rigging whatsoever. The usual thing on this takeoff is to take off here and turn to the left, go over in that direction where there's a rocky escarpment and you usually find a good climb there. Uh, so that's the usual, people take off, turn to the left. I suppose you could turn right. I don't know if I've ever tried it. Um, in terms of the area where you fly to the south, there are low foothills, which takes you then out into the flats area, so it's, it's very good. It's a little bit more stable, a bit more difficult flying in that area. Uh, to the north is where it takes you towards the Pyrenees. Now, directly to the north of Azure is a hill called um, Sierra del Gurp, and it's a chain of small ridges which is a very rugged landscape and when you when you actually fly on the main Azure Ridge and you look over the back at the GURP uh, it looks low, it looks for, forbidding, it looks scary to fly over but when you fly over it uh, it's, there's actually a lot of thermal activity, it's a very good um, place to fly over. Further north than the GURP you then got um, on, to the sort of north northwest. there's a dam at a place called Sapira you can go out to the west to a place that we call Vulture Rock and then further west than that uh, a huge ridge called um, Sierra Ferreira or that I nicknamed when we came here before the Ferreira Roche because I forgot the name of it. To the northeast of the main Azure Ridge is the Tremp Valley which is flattish but it rises up gently towards the northeast and there are hills bordering it on the north and the east side of it and then you've got the GURP on the west side of it and all that works really well uh, and that's good for, for cross-country tasks and quite often as well you can pick up thermals in the middle of the valley uh, we've flown in this competition straight over the middle of the Trent Valley uh, and there are good landings all the way through the valley and then just to the north of the Trent Valley you've got uh, the lake which is the, I think it's called Tallard or Talan Dam uh, and you can land on the shore of the lake there. It's a really good landing uh, and then you can just afterwards go for a swim there. So that's a really nice place to fly. The main Azure Ridge itself is 5,000 feet high. It's a huge forbidding looking ridge. And if you fly out to the west, then it takes you to a, a nice lake that you fly over at a place called Corsa, which is where we've been staying on our trip. 
if you fly out to the east it takes you to a gap that you have to jump but you can actually then continue along the ridge for some considerable time further to the east and you can always drop back north again into the Trent Valley which is just to the north of there. You have to get high to cross the gap to the east uh, but we've been doing it from 7,000 feet without any real problems whatsoever um, and then just climbing up on the on the far side of it. So throughout the whole area there are plenty of good landings, lots of uh, flat fields. Uh, you do have to watch for fields that have got irrigation spikes in, there's like lots of poles sticking up with irrigation in but you generally look for a nice cut field uh, and it is very easy to do landings all over the place really. Um, at the bottom of Azure there are some fields that they use for bottom landings officially and they've got wind socks in which really helps. On those days uh, when you can't actually fly or maybe you decide to have a rest day and not flying while you're in Azure, there, there is actually plenty to, to see and do. Um, there's the lake out to the west at Corsa uh, and at that lake you can go swimming, you can hire canoes uh, and there's a gorge that you can take the canoe through. The gorge goes all the way through the mountain to the north and it's possible to paddle a canoe all the way through that. Alternatively there is a pass where you can walk through. Uh, it's a two or three hour walk and you climb up the mountain and you walk through this pass that's been cut out of the sheer rock face. It's really quite exciting but if you're going to take your kids I suggest you hold on to them. <laughs> The area is very rural and very rugged with lots of absolutely gorgeous scenery and there are quite a few abandoned villages dotted, dotted around which you can go and explore. Uh, we went to one, it took us about an hour walk up a mountain and then we explored this old abandoned village. A um, bit dangerous really, you shouldn't really do it, these things are falling down and could fall down on top of you but really really interesting. Good places to see the, uh, the actual rugged beauty of the place and to, to think how people used to live on the top of these mountains in these tiny little uh, villages. Um, really interesting, but as I say, pretty dangerous if you're going to go there. In terms of accommodation, uh, it is possible to hire apartments out. Um, the cost isn't that expensive. For example, we hired an eight person apartment for two weeks uh, and the cost was 1500 euros between eight people for two weeks which is really quite reasonable um, and, you know it's, it's a decent enough place to stay and very accessible the place where we stayed was a place called Corsa which is right next to the lake or about half a mile away from the lake so it was good access for us to go swimming or just sunbathing on the lake if we fancied alternatively you might want to stay on, on the campsite which is right in the centre of Azure costs probably around 20 euros a night depending on uh, whether you've got a tent or a caravan and whether you want electric and also of course on how many people you've got but uh, the, the campsite has got really good facilities it's got a restaurant and a bar it's got all the toilets and I think it's got a swimming pool as well so it's quite a good campsite to stay at uh, also on the campsite they do have little cabins that you can stay in uh, which range in cost between 90 euros a night to 130 euros a night depending on how many people you've got staying in your cabins. Um, they're quite well outfitted with their own little shower and bathroom uh, and nice little places to stay. In terms of eating um, there are a few little cafes in town where you can get meals. I'm just sat near to the Bar Torres which is just up the road here. Um, there's also restaurants dotted around. There's a beautiful restaurant on the top of the hill behind me. Um, or of course you can nip to the supermarket and buy your own stuff to cook. The nearest supermarket is probably about 30 minutes away in the Trent Valley. So that is my brief guide to Azure and flying in the area. Um, check out my other videos that uh, I'll be putting up which show the actual flying in the area and a bit of a guided tour around the area and we'll also show the competition tasks that we've had here during the last week uh, where you can follow my progress through the competition. Hope you've enjoyed this video, hope you've give, it's given you a bit of an insight into flying around Azure and staying in Azure and what to expect here. Um, hopefully you'll come and stay here sometime, it's a really good place to stop. See you soon.